All right, so before I put it off again, here is an unscripted tutorial on how to make my Yummy Hustle replays. I'm just going to generally go over what you should try to strive for to make the replay look cool. Um, and more, more importantly, uh, make sure you don't corrupt the entire thing because Yummy Hustle replays are very delicate and they're very easy to screw up and very easy to just kind of corrupt in general. So i uh, just going to go through all that, starting with the mod here. Yeah, Replay Plus. I would highly recommend this mod. Um, I believe there's a few replay mods out there, but this one's worked the best. Um, gives you a timeline that you can scroll through. Uh, so definitely head to the workshop, get this. It's by Snazza. He does a lot of really cool mods. He also did this um, water shader here. Worked on this. Uh, this is what I use in the... A lot of people were asking if that was like an edited effect. No, it's not. It's just um, a mod that Snazza made with Puppet Squid. Uh, gives you like a cool water reflection effect on any stage, so you can use that anywhere. And I'll probably end up using it in the future again, because there's a few uh, water stages it would have looked cool on. So let's just head right in. A lot of people ask my settings. Here they are. I'm going to go over them really fast. Um, round length. Have that set to practically infinite. Stage width, also practically infinite, because I like to have the characters... Uh, fly way off screen and way back and I don't find wall combos particularly interesting so start distance I used to have set higher but I've set it on 200 because if you have it set higher uh, your characters run the chance of just kind of get smushed in um, by the edges of the screen they'll kind of get pushed towards the center or any text you type at the start will just kind of uh, get cut off and you don't want that so ceiling height doesn't matter we're going to delete anyways GI combo limit don't care about that I don't use it um, damage modifier you do want to be careful with because if you change this uh, too low, 0.1, it's going to make your characters almost immortal. And you don't really want that unless you don't intend for either character to die like I did in the uh, Fallen and Niflheim one. Um, I had this as a, as a frame of reference for you guys, right? I had this set to, I believe, 0.2 for the Gorn and Vixen and the Tempest and Delinquent ones. So if you want a general... Um, idea of how long, like how much uh, runtime this would give you in the video. Uh, you can kind of take a look at those. The hit stun I don't mess with. Uh, hit stop I do mess with. The hit stop was set to 2.0 or the Gorn and Vixen run. And I believe 0.5 or 0.2, probably 0.5 for the Delinquent and Tempest one. And this one is kind of on a character by character basis, right? So, uh, for the Gorn and Vixen one, it did look pretty good, I thought, um, because those characters don't have any built in hit stop. It adds a lot of impact to stuff, like the uh, Vixen uppercut looks really, really cool with those impact frames. Uh, similarly, like the Gorn chainsaw kick looked really sick when you have that big freeze frame. Um, in other cases, this can look really, really awkward if the characters <laughs> have built in hit stop, uh, which I did not. Uh, I was not very careful with with the Tempest and Delinquent one. You can see there's some awkward points in that. Like uh, when Delinquent does the uppercut, it freezes for probably a little bit too long, I'd say. Uh, same thing for the Tempest, like Tornado. It freezes for a pretty awkward amount of time. So definitely like know if your characters have built-in hit stop that you're messing with, um, or else you can kind of take away from the replay. Uh, I would also recommend actually turning this up just a little bit. Um, regardless, if you're new to making replays, because this will fill out more time, uh, your move, each each move will um, take more time, just because of the little frames that are at the end of it where everything's frozen. Uh, so it makes it a lot easier to make long videos without actually doing more work. <laughs> um, I had this set to one for the Fallen Niflheim video because I wanted to be really fast paced, and that video took me upwards of like six to seven hours. So this definitely kind of decides uh how much effort you have to put in while the damage modifier decides how i guess indirectly how much effort you have to put in but also mostly how long your video will be uh starting meter doesn't really matter because we're gonna have infinite resources anyways the di scaling i've not messed with yet this is a more recent setting as far as i can tell um, if you mess with these, you can make it so the DI scales up a little slower. So if you want to have like one character just absolutely dumpster the other, uh, this would give you those really long combos that are really easy to keep because the DI is not super influential. Um, I mess with DI 
anyways. When I want a character to stay in a combo, I'll DI them into the combo. Um, obviously, you want to do that carefully to make it more believable. Um, you can also do the opposite, where you can just, if you want to send a character just absolutely flying, you can build up their DI to like time six and then just crank it in one direction. Um, so you could even, <laughs> if you wanted to be really crazy, you could you could bring this up to like 10 or something and then just send the character just zooming across the stage. Uh, but by default in Yomi Hustle, it is six. And I've not changed it from six. So uh, all of these are the same. Sadness, you want to turn off. It'll just mess with your pacing. There's no reason to have it on. Ceiling, we just delete that because I like sending characters really high and I don't want to worry about a ceiling. Uh, it would be really awkward on some of these more open maps. Like the, the stages that look like they would be open, it wouldn't make sense for them to be a ceiling. So I don't bother with having one. Uh, asymmetrical clashing, very important. This makes it so multi-hit moves will continue um, kind of chaining even if they've clashed with another move. So if two characters do multi-hit moves, I believe normally they would uh, both kind of ricochet off each other. Um, but if you turn this on, they just keep on going, and it looks really cool if you can find the uh, characters that do it together. Uh, for example, like the Goran Chase Dodge and the Vixen Magma Charge, that's how I got that big flurry in the uh, Goran and Vixen video. It looks really, really sick, and obviously I spammed the hell out of that because it was awesome. So if you can find stuff like that, it will really add to your replay. Turbo Mode and Extremely Turbo Mode, I do not mess with. Um, I just I, I feel like my replay is just like more believable if I have them off. Um, makes it feel as though they could uh, potentially be like two just really edgy PvP players. <laughs> so, uh, and then obviously we have infinite resources on, and you just save it here. Um, you can override your uh, loadout by just doing that. This overrides the uh, settings. So let's go into this. Um, let's see. Let's start with yeah. How you do the text? This is the biggest question. So. If you don't know this, um, I don't blame you because it was mentioned <laughs> once on the itch.io page, like back on a really early update before the game was even on Steam, and then never again. So everyone who knows about it was either around back then and saw it on the itch.io page just by chance, or they heard it from someone else who was there. So it's just slash em1 for this left character, so we'll say hello, and slash em2 for this right character, so we'll say goodbye. And you'll see it appear above the character and then disappear. That's not how long it will actually last um, in the replay. So you want to, uh, you're gonna have to do a little bit of math, but as far as I can tell, it lasts about 180 frames. And this is your frame counter up here. So we're gonna go ahead about 180 frames and you'll see that text uh, disappear about at the same time that the replay ends. So now 180 frames have passed. If we watch the replay back, you're gonna see it disappear right as the replay ends. Yeah, so how about 180? Um, and if you want it to go above 180, if you want it to last longer than that, you'd actually just input the same thing again, either like halfway through the 180 frames or at the end of the 180 frames. And it will let, it'll make it last uh, from that point another 180 frames. And I use this in the Fallen and Niflheim one when I had them talk a lot uh, in kind of like one stride. I would make it last longer so people have more time to read. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead here to 550. And you'll see that goodbye disappears, but hello does not. It stays there, as if it was just one big text. And um, let me see. Let's just get these to start moving. So I'm going to show you the timeline mod now. If this guy will move, hello. He's decided not to. Uh, so you can open up a timeline if you press T using the timeline mod. This is very, very nice. Um, so it kind of, kind of a quirk with the Yummy Hustle replays. Uh, this is something you have to work around. If you, all right, so I'm not in I'm not entirely sure why he's just not moved, but we'll, we'll, we'll make do. I think that mod's outdated. Uh, whenever you put in your text, right? This is very important. Whenever you put in your text, it is always going to execute on that frame, no matter what. Um, so if I took off the timeline and start undoing back to 550 where we were or really to demonstrate let's go to let's see let's let's start at 492 uh we're gonna have one of the characters say something wrong something that we don't want them to say we're gonna progress uh 
Um, so now you're going to see the character will say hello. And they're going to say wrong. They're going to say a text that we don't want them to say. And no matter what, that text is always going to execute on that frame that we input it. It is hard coded into the replay. So even if we were to undo back to 550, which might take us a little bit, even if we were to delete everything after that point in the replay, the other character will always say that um, at that point in the replay. So we can do something completely different. We've, we've deleted everything in the replay after 550, yeah? But if we start doing stuff again, uh, if we kind of just like go on making a replay like normal, You see that once we get to that point, he's going to say it again. So if we watch it back, he's just going to hit. So even though we've deleted everything after that point in the replay, he still puts in the text that we don't want to be there. You cannot undo text. Um, so how do you get around this? If you put in the wrong text, uh, if you put in the wrong text at the wrong time, you might be screwed. <laughs> if you have a character saying something at the wrong time that you don't want them to say, you might be better off restarting if you're early into the replay. Uh, if you're late into the replay and you kind of want to salvage it, um, or if they said something at the right time, but the wrong text, uh, I can show you how to fix that. So we're going to watch it back. We're going to open this timeline. We're going to let it get to right about where you want it. So... I think it was uh, 492, he said it, right? Somewhere. So you get this one frame button using a timeline mod. This is so useful. Uh, whereabouts does he say that? There it is. So let's go back a little bit. Let's go to the, yeah, so he says it on this frame. So 492 up here. We can actually override this. So if we have him say right, now when you watch the replay back, we don't let it restart again. Close that. Watch the replay. Uh, you won't even see him say wrong. He's just going to say right. Uh, and that is the main... Okay, so... Did I take back everything I said? A timeline mod. Um... Oh, did I do it at the wrong time? I've done it at the wrong time. I've done it... Okay, take my word for it. Trust me. Source, trust me. <laughs> I've, I've done it before. Uh, where you could potentially salvage your replay. I think I just clicked on the wrong frame. But if you find the exact frame that your character said the wrong text on, um, you can override it uh, with just some other... Just have them say something else entirely. I've done this before. Um, the only video this is actually in is on the uh, phone and delinquent video. I did actually uh, mess up once, and I ended up using it. You probably won't find it, because I meshed it really well. But it is very useful for salvaging your replay if you accidentally put in the right text. But obviously, just, just try not to. <laughs> just uh, try to be like very careful with how fast your pacing is. Always just like frequently watch your replay back to make sure you're not having text appear too fast. Um, because you don't want to get too far and then realize that all of your text was horribly timed and probably is just going to be completely incoherent. Because um, at that point, you're better off restarting because yeah, there's just so much mistimed text. Um, also, very important, if you are watching your replay back and you hit edit replay before the replay ends, you've just deleted everything after that point. So be very, very careful. Um, you see we had like 300 more frames after this and they're all gone. Uh, same thing happens if I go back here, I'm watching a replay and I click edit replay, the end is now here. Uh, everything after this point gets deleted and... So far, I mean, I mean, obviously it would because how would you input moves in the middle of the replay and still have it sync up with later parts of the replay? So um, be very careful when you have like a long replay. Always make sure it plays out to the ends so that you aren't missing anything. Um, that's why this timeline mod is so useful. It lets you skip to the end so that you're not um, having to wait through the replay every single time to avoid uh clicking the edit button like edit button early and just deleting everything that you had set up um but yeah i think that covers about everything um the rest of it's just general game sense just knowing uh
how people would normally play the game in PvP. If you play a lot of PvP, you probably won't have much issue making cool replays. Um, like cool, believable replays uh, generally look the best. But if you have any more questions, or if I went over anything too fast, and you have a question on it, just ask me in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Um, what else? What else? I think that's about it. As far as... Oh yeah, one more thing. If you're doing modded replays, uh, which most of you probably will be, because they're cool. A lot of people have put a lot of effort in these characters, and it really shows. They're really sick. Um, generally... Unfortunately, you do want to do your replays in one take because I've had times where um, if a mod updates even slightly, or even if it doesn't update, sometimes uh, if you save a replay and then try to come back to it on another day, uh, the replay will just be corrupted just, just randomly. Just Yomi Hustle replays are so finicky and so uh, delicate that you really generally just want to do it all in one take, and then as soon as you're done, just record it. So. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would highly recommend it. If you're doing it in vanilla, it's probably not as big of a deal, but I imagine most of you are going to be wanting to do modded replays with these cool stages in the background and all that, because why wouldn't you? Um, but yeah, that's generally it. Um, if you have any more questions for me relating to how to make replays or not, I'll, I'll try and answer them. So that's it. Thank you. Bye-bye.